If you're a user of the SmartVert, SmartEdge, or SmartFace tools, then you can now also activate the SmartPy menu, which exposes these tools and their variations in a single menu. By default, it's mapped to the one key, just like SmartVert itself is by default too. For instance, with the Pi activated, you can now use SmartVert like this to merge to the ActiveVert, and even in a quick swiping motion. Notice that with an edge selection, just like when invoked via the tool's key map, it matters where the mouse is positioned as there is no active vert in edge mode. So before you open the Pi, position your mouse accordingly when merging in edge or face modes. And so if I move the mouse here, then these points will be merged over to the side my mouse was just on. Whereas if I position the mouse on this side, then these will be merged over to here, right? Like that. At the bottom, you'll find Smart Edge and its toggle sharp and offset edges variations, which are otherwise mapped to two, Shift 2 and Control 2. Smart Edge itself, and with a single edge selection, will turn that edge. With a face selection, it selects the region boundary edges, and with an edge boundary selection, it will select the faces on the inside. Refer to the docs for details on what else Smart Edge can do. It's the most versatile of the three smart tools. Smart Face with a face selection will create a new object, like that, and with a vert or edge selection would create a face. Check out the docs for details on that too. If you choose to use this Pi, then you can actually disable the individual tool key maps. And there's a little helper tool in the Smart Pi settings to do that conveniently. Just use this button to toggle all Smart Vert, Smart Edge, and Smart Face key maps at once, freeing them up for something else. Or maybe you want to enable only some specific ones, your choice. Finally, the Smart Pi's own key map can be viewed and changed under the Key Maps tab, of course, like for any other tool or Pi and machine tools. The Tools Pi's top button now switches between two tools by default, Select Box and the Move tool. Previously, it only activated the Select Box tool, or if you had Hypercursor installed, it would switch between Select Box and Hypercursor. This behavior is now fully customizable. In the add-on preferences for the Tools Pi, you just type in a comma-separated list of the tools you want to use. For instance, if I change this to Rotate, You'll switch between Select Box and the Rotate tool, right? And if you're unsure how the tools are named, you can check out the tooltips in the toolbar. But make sure you have Python tooltips enabled in Blender's interface preferences to be able to see the internal tool names. You can use more than two tools here as well, and the tool switcher will cycle through all of them in sequence then. For instance, now I have set up three tools, and I can go from Rotate to Hypercursor to Select Box. Personally, I prefer to use just two, though, and I use it to quickly switch in and out of Hypercursor. Also, you can now use the Alt Mod key to invoke the new modal tool picker, which allows you to pick any tool you want in a more direct way. The benefit is that you have all of this right under the mouse, and you can even change tools without having the toolbar open. You can also directly access tools within a group of tools, which would otherwise be hidden under a drop down menu with the native toolbar pop up, for instance. Here it's all directly visible and accessible. And you may not want to use the switcher at all, and in that case can change the top button to always pick the tools. Or you can directly access the tool picker via its key map, Shift Q but note that it's disabled by default to avoid conflicts. Remap it to something else if Shift-Q is occupied already, which allows you to skip the Pi and switch tools through a key press. It's super convenient, especially if you don't like to have the toolbar open. And of course it works in edit mode too, and here it offers a different set of tools. The SavePy has received an update and now supports autosaving. When you enable it, an autosave will be performed and a small HUD will be shown in the 3D view to confirm. By default, it autosaves every 30 seconds and before any undo operation you do. 
Both of these are fully adjustable in the Save Pies settings, including whether Auto Save is shown in the menu at all. You can choose to Self Save, which means it saves the current file in the path you have saved to before. This is disabled by default, and it only saves a copy to an external file, optionally to any custom folder you set here, or to the system's temp dir if nothing is set. And you can toggle pre undo and pre redo saving which may be useful if you notice Blender crashing a lot on undo or redo. Determine the save interval in seconds here, down to every 10 seconds, as well as limit the number of externally saved files, which is 20 by default, and which would give you a file history going back 10 minutes with the default settings. In the Pi, you can adjust some of these settings too. And if you want to open the auto save folder, you can just alt click on it, which brings it up in Blender's file browser. Or if you control click on it, then the folder will be opened in your system's file browser, like so. Saving will then also happen at the beginning and at the end of toggling autosave. Also, the Save Pi in Blender 4.5 will now use the new FBX import by default. Disable this in the add-on prefs if you don't want that. The Workspace Pi will now sync the active tool when you switch between an original and its alternative workspace. For instance, I have the Select Box tool enabled here on the original and the Move tool on the alternative one. So switching to the alternative workspace will now activate Select Box automatically. As before, the view alignment and the shading settings are synced too, of course. And if I change the tool on the alternative workspace now, the original one will then make it active too as soon as I switch back to it. Furthermore, if you want to force this behavior when switching to a completely different workspace, you can do so. Just hold the Alt Mod key while switching. And as you can see, Hypercursor becomes the active tool here too now, along with the shading settings, which are forcibly synced too when Alt is held just like in earlier versions already. If you have an armature and it is linked from an external file, then you can't access the pose mode via the modes pie, unless you use a library override, at which point the pose button becomes available and so you can just pose it as usual then. SmartFace has been updated and when invoked via the four key by default, and with a face selection, it still creates a new object from those faces. But in the redo panel, you now have the option to choose between one of three extraction modes. And so if you run it on a selection like this and choose the new dissolve mode, it also creates a new object from it, but will dissolve the boundary edges of the selection on the original object. There's also the new extract method, which still creates a new object, but instead of duplicating the original face selection, removes those faces on the source object. What you can then also do is choose to stay on the original object instead of automatically entering edit mode of the new separate object. If you choose to stay, you can just repeat the object creation process repeatedly for various parts of a model, which mirrors Blender's native behavior of the separate tool. So this object has an array modifier and a mirror modifier. And the focus tool, when invoked in frame selected mode via the F key by default, already ignores arrays and mirrors, unless disabled in the redo panel. Now arrays are also supported when invoked in local view mode via Control F. Focus will temporarily disable the array mods, and so better isolate the actual object only. And then as soon as you step out of local view, the mods will be restored again. In Blender 4.5 in the Asset Browser, the new Native Capture Screenshot Preview tool is now exposed directly under the thumbnail if you have machine tools installed. This is a little easier to access compared to the drop-down here, and this is true even if you have the Asset Browser tools disabled. With them enabled, Machine Tools' own thumbnail creation tool will also be exposed alongside the new Native tool. Among other things, this tool will by default render without overlays, for instance and unlike the native tool will also keep the asset selected. 